it's it, you were saying something about they didn't play. This is a perfect segue into the main thing I wanted to talk to you about like two weeks ago, but unfortunately we could not get in it. We got to talk about Jason Woodlock, man, and what he said about mm. Steve. We got to because I saw your show. I saw your show <laughs> when you were going through the uh, Stephen A. Smith story, and you were like. This is some Final Fantasy stuff right here. So I got a bunch of questions I got to ask you. <laughs> First of all, okay. what do you think about Jason? Because, I mean, Jason Whitlock, he went through this long thing. And I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of like hot and cold on him, but I decided to watch. And when he went on the, when he went on this kind of crusade and he was investigating Stephen A. Smith's background and all of that, and he got into the college career stuff. And in the 1.5, he said he was averaging a game. Then Stephen A. Smith said he only played one game. And we were like, but how do you average 1.5? You only play one game. And then he said he didn't play any games. What did you think about that whole thing of <laughs> Jason Whitlock going at Stephen A. Smith? And what did you think about Stephen A. Smith's response back to Jason Whitlock? Yeah, it, I think all in all, it was beautiful and necessary. And I need more of that. Um now, I'm not the one, like, it just seems like, Charles, you are on the pulse of sports media. Oh. Like, matter of fact, I need to just bite your show. I need to get your topic sent to me <laughs> so I can know what to talk about because you don't let anything get by. I watch your show all the time. I'm like, damn, why not do that topic? So the point is, you are on it. You and Marco kill it. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm not always there. And people who watch my show know. They're like, yeah, Wally, when you gonna talk about this? Right, I'm like, right. what I you mean? You that, and I'm right. like, tell me what it is. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't get so I didn't know that Whitlock was killing Stephen A. And Stephen A was trying to avoid Whitlock, and then finally it happened. But then I caught wind. Wow. And when I caught wind, I still delayed probably compared to the average bear. Um, but I watch Whitlock's show not regularly, but a lot. Um, and I watch Stephen A. Smith's show a lot. Um, here's the thing. Stephen A obviously was lying, but I try to respect people and say it like this. I don't know if you lying, but you certainly not telling the truth, you know, but I don't put it in the category of when he was 19, he made up this story and just stuck to it his whole life. No, this is the same thing we see when you go to college. As soon as you get to college, every single person that you're meeting probably is a different person than they were in high school. Mm. Not because they really change, it's because they story change. Mm. <laughs> every single mm. fool I met as a freshman, oh man, I'm from the hood. Oh yeah, could like, I'm like, wait a minute. You, what you? I was like, don't let me go home with you. And then I go home with you and I'm like, you ain't the hard one. Cause the hard one wouldn't have done all the work necessary to get exactly. here. You, you man, stop. That's your family, fool. So I've always been soft. I've always been the punk. I've always been the one that lasts when you want to fight. I've always been the one giggling. I ain't about to fight you, fool. Because one, I know I'm going to win. But two, <laughs> I don't want to even get into it with you. It's funny, Charles, you laughing. Somebody walked up to me at the Clipper game last time I was. And they was like, damn, why do you write? Ain't nobody going to mess with you. You really are big in real life. I was like, no, don't let this TV fool you, bro. I put these paws on you. So here's the thing. So... I'm looking at these cats. I'm like, man, everybody got a story, right? And they all try to exaggerate it. So I think Stephen A just exaggerated his story. And I fell victim to this before. I used to not claim Compton when I was in the NFL at first. It was like, I'm from L.A. Hmm. And I just thought that that was enough until it felt like Compton got mad at me. Like, nah, you were from Compton. Hmm. And then you're going to act like you ain't because you in the NFL hmm. now. I was like. Actually, it's a compliment to me from Compton, but I wasn't on, I was there for my first six years and then I was only there every weekend. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yeah, I'm from Compton, but, and then they made me have to claim Compton. Mm -hmm. Then LA talking about, you ain't claiming LA. And then Slauson oh, wow, and the Overhills wow, talking about, you ain't. Wow. And then they get real gangster and deep. So I'm like, man, look, I can understand where sometimes you leave something out just to keep the story going. Uh, as they say, the greatest storytellers are the ones who forget what to say. Like, don't bring every detail to every conversation. Forget some of those details. So maybe Stephen A forgot Bro, <laughs> some of the he, details. I, I, you, you, but you, I don't you, know. It sounds like a lot. You be you be a night. He was straight up capping, man. Mar Marcel, I sat back and I watched your show, and he was talking about you were talking about the recruitment story. And you were like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly what you said. You were no. like, I'm not gonna say you're yeah, lying. No. But you definitely not telling the truth. He was like, you were like, that never happens. And for him to not respond to that specific point, I was like, man, this is a, 
This is absolutely incredible. So let me ask you, uh, Jason Whitlock says that it's not personal with him and Stephen A. Smith, but he has made it his business to constantly try to expose him. Do you think that there's something something happening maybe behind the scenes that we don't know? Or do you think that Jason Whitlock just said, hey, today I'm going to decide to talk about Stephen A. Smith and that's it. Do you think there's like this other beef? Because the way he went at him and it kept on going at him, even after he responded, <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, Lord, what's going on here? I warned Stephen A. I mean, I ain't have to warn him. He knows Jason Whitlock. And um, I warned the world, I guess, that doesn't know Jason Whitlock. Um, he's a dog. Stephen A's a dog. I'm a dog. We all dogs. Uh, but I remember reading about this. We're just all different types and breeds of dogs, mm -hmm. right? I am a Rottweiler. Like, I'm kind of lazy with this stuff. I'll let you just get some jokes off, some shots off. I'm just sitting there by the front door. I see somebody on the porch. I'm just staring at him. Then he walk over there. I'm just looking at him. But when it's time to go, I'm going to go. I, that's what kind of dog I am. Whitlock is a pit bull. <laughs> like once he locks in on you, you may think it's personal, but he just doing the business to the fullest. Mm. Like I've worked with him before. It consumes him because he does his homework. I don't know anyone else. And this is no shots at anybody's how they get their work done and how they prepare. But I don't know anybody that works with more investigative like determination than Whitlock on any topic. Wow. Now that could take him to where when you watch him, you're like, dog, relax or dog that's enough you know why he ain't finished because he has done his homework and mm. be real who in the hell read Stephen a smith's book like that people ain't read my book and they be coming up to me oh man your book is amazing man fool you ain't read this book <laughs> I, can, I can give you three questions right now like, shut, it, shut it so ain't nobody I, look i'm not built to read nobody's book like that i i love you you give me the book it's gonna be a pretty trophy i ain't reading that whole thing no i know you that's enough so i don't think anybody read his book but Whitlock did he did man he <laughs> not only did what I was he like bro this and he is... read him his rights because he read the book i was like he knows man this, this dude this, this, and i'm this like dude. wow I was like, man, this dude, man, he, he was, and he, I personally think that because some people were saying that Stephen A. Smith kind of went too far by coming back at him and cursing and all of those things. In the end, I mean, after Stephen A. Smith did his thing and then Jason Whitlock responded, I, I'm, I'm going to give it to Whitlock on that one. I think Whitlock won, actually, if I'm being honest with you, because those points he brought up, Stephen A. Smith never addressed. He talked about other things. And Whitlock addressed the email thing that he said and they sent to him and all that. But those things that he brought up about the college and all of that, he he, he never refuted it. So I personally think that Whitlock uh, uh, won that beef. Speaking of beef. I'm with you, too. Speaking of beef. I think so, too. And I got caught up in it. I gave it, like, you ever watch a boxing match? You'd be like, man, who in the hell grading? Who judging these scores? Like, like boo. I gave a bad score. I, at first, I thought it was closer than it was. I thought that, you know, Stephen A caught me with all the profanities right. and and all the, oh, man, fat bastard. Fat bastard like, he caught no. me. He got me good. And then I went back and listened again because fans were pushing back on me. Like, why? They keep it 100. I was like, no, I thought he did. And then I started listening for real. I was like, oh, dog. He didn't negate anything. anything. He didn't go at any, any of these points. points. And then it reminded me of when him and I had our conversation for the world to hear. Um, he didn't refute my points either. Like, right, just, right. He kind of like I is remember. the king of distraction. I remember on the yeah, breakfast. Yeah, I remember that. 